Would you rather watch a video that is in super low resolution but has crystal clear audio, or would you want to watch something in 8K resolution with having terrible sounding audio where you can't hear any of the dialogue or there's no sound design or anything? Chances are most of you are going to opt for picking the first option with lower resolution but higher quality audio. All right, well, I've got Chelsea here sitting in for me for this interview setup. And the first thing I wanna do is talk about using a boom mic. And that's what I've got right here. This is a Rode NTG5 microphone. It's a shotgun microphone, and this is boomed overhead. So the direction of the audio basically is being captured like this. So these shotgun microphones are really good from rejecting sound coming from behind the microphone. Now these are really good for capturing really clear and natural sounding audio. Now some things to consider with shotgun microphones. First of all, if you're indoors, it's actually better to use a super cardioid microphone as opposed to a shotgun microphone because the way it's designed is able to pick up dialogue much better indoors than a shotgun microphone. However, it is really common to use a shotgun microphone. In fact, probably the most common shotgun microphone out there used on professional sets is the Sennheiser MKH416. And those are used on Hollywood movies and episodic TV shows and all kinds of stuff. It's a really, really great sounding mic. Now, when it comes to placement, there's a couple of things that you need to consider with a boom mic. First of all, the obvious thing is you wanna make sure that it's out of frame, but you wanna make sure that it's just out of frame so it's as close to the talent as possible. Now, once it's outside of frame, another thing you want to consider is making sure that it's not over their head or too far away from their mouth. Now, if I'm indoors, I like to just keep the microphone bare like this because uh, it just sounds much cleaner and crisper. However, if you are outside or if there is an air conditioning unit or something that you can't control, then you wanna put something over it like a dead cat or something like that, just so that any kind of wind noise or anything like that is gonna be blocked from say that dead cat or whatever the case may be. Now for getting that mic boomed overhead of the talent, what you need to use is a boom pole. This one right here is a little bit shorter. It's made for travel because I travel quite a bit for work and I do quite a lot of interviews traveling. So this thing just kind of fits in my check case a lot better than a longer boom pole. And then I've got this boom pole holder, which fits into a grip head of a C-stand. And then obviously at the bottom of the C-stand, we have a sandbag on it for safety. You want to have that on all of your stands, whether it's for grip, lighting, or sound, just make sure you have it on there for safety. Now, shotgun microphones are really good and sound really natural, but I wouldn't recommend using just that if possible. What I would also recommend using is a lavalier microphone. This kind of gives you uh, the flexibility to kind of balance sound out, either to use a mix of both of them or just switch to the lav mic if it just sounds better. Now, when I'm filming interviews, I much prefer to use both a shotgun mic and a lav mic in conjunction with each other, just because you have the flexibility of in post choosing between the two mics, whichever one may sound better when you start EQing it, or maybe you wanna blend them together to kind of get a richer sound. I've done that as well. Now, the placement of the lav mic uh, largely depends on uh, what the setting is. Sometimes if you're doing a more of a, a cinematic piece, where it's a, you know, you want to make your documentary or interview kind of look more like a Netflix interview, then you might want to hide that lavalier microphone. And there's a number of ways. I'm not going to go over all the ways in this video how to do that, but you can hide it under a collar, maybe in a hat. You can hide it under someone's shirt with some stickies or something like that. So there's a number of ways to be able to hide that lavalier microphone if you want to be able to do that. Now, one major benefit of having a wireless lavalier microphone over a shotgun microphone would be in this kind of scenario where your talent is really far away from the camera for whatever reason. Now, not typical for your traditional sit down interview, like with the framing that we've got here where I would normally be sitting in this blue chair, but think of a, a YouTube host or, or a TV host or something and they're walking around in the frame and maybe they're even turning their back to the frame or they're just really far away from the camera. 
This microphone here on my chest is picking up the audio much clearer than say the shotgun microphone that's over there about 10 to 12 feet away from me. So up until now, you've been hearing the wireless lavalier microphone, but since I'm here in the seat, I'll kind of give you a comparison between the shotgun microphone and the wireless lavalier microphone so you can kind of get an idea of the different audio quality and characteristics between the two. So right now you are listening to the Rode NTG5 running in to an external recorder, which we'll talk about here in a minute. And you can tell there's much richer tones, sounds a lot more natural and not as boxed in as this wireless lavalier microphone. And when I switch over to this wireless lavalier microphone, you can really hear the difference in audio quality. Now, this wireless lavalier microphone that I have on my chest right here, it's a really good microphone. It's made by Sankin. It's kind of an industry standard. It's really popular. It sounds really good, but it's obviously gonna sound much different. And in my opinion, not as good as a shotgun microphone in most scenarios. Now, in this kind of scenario right here, I'll typically opt for the shotgun microphone audio first, uh, just because to me it always sounds more natural, uh, much more real to life, and it just it just sounds a lot better. Uh, but this wireless lavalier microphone has come in handy numerous times in interviews where it just ended up sounding better than the shotgun microphone. Or if I just kind of brought the mix up a little bit of the wireless lav in with the shotgun microphone audio, it started to sound even better. It just depends on the room. So from a microphone's perspective, having a boom mic and a lav mic are really great to have as a combination when recording in interviews. Now, speaking of recording that audio, there are a couple of ways of doing that. Now you can record right into camera, but even the best cinema cameras out there don't have as good of preamps as a dedicated sound recorder. Now this right here is a dedicated sound recorder. This one's made by sound devices, but you can go out and get whatever brand that you know, works within your budget or whatever the case may be. But there are specific features within these field recorders that are dedicated sound recorders that you get that are benefits over say a cinema camera. And one of those things like, for example, this right here is I have three audio channels that I can use and they all provide phantom power through this XLR input. And the reason why that's so important is because my shotgun microphone actually requires phantom power to even work. So I can send phantom power to this shotgun microphone, which is really good. And then I have two other channels that I can use to plug in maybe another lavalier mic or whatever the case may be. Additionally, this field recorder is able to record in 32-bit float audio. Now, if you're not familiar with that term, it's essentially like recording in RAW versus MP4 or taking a RAW photo versus a JPEG. You have way more information in that file that you can use in post-production. And this is really helpful for analyzing it through a program to maybe remove background noise or maybe the, the talent starts speaking really loudly or really softly you can use the 32-bit float audio and it's really clean all the way through the whole range that it recorded. So you can bring that audio up without bringing in, introducing a lot of hiss and noise, or if something appears to have clipped or something like that and gotten you know really distorted at the high end, you can bring that level down and balance that out. And most of the time, it cleans up perfectly. All right, the next thing I wanna to touch on is capturing room tone. Now, room tone is essentially just getting the tone of the room. So you're just recording absolute silence or essentially silence to everyone on set so that you can get a good clean plate of audio so that if you need to do any cuts in post or there's any awkward pauses or whatever the case may be and you do a cut, you can use that room tone to kind of blend those two cuts together so it sounds seamless as opposed to just having a, a real harsh cut of audio. Now, while you are recording that audio, you also want to be monitoring that audio. Just like you monitor your cameras while you're conducting the interview, you also want to be listening to that audio that's being recorded, just so that there's no surprises when you get into post-production. When you're monitoring audio, you can catch things like a microphone dropping out or interference or anything like that, or maybe when you're conducting the interview and you heard a, dr a car drive by or a plane go overhead, it may not seem that big of a deal because we hear that stuff, you know, day to day, day in and day out, but the microphones could pick that up and amplify that sound even more and create just a, a massive headache in post-production or maybe even completely ruin that take. So it's really important to monitor that audio. And the last thing to consider when capturing audio is to treat the room as best as you can for sound. 
Now, this may not always be possible because of location restrictions or whatever the case may be. And I'm talking like turning off the air conditioning unit if you can, or the heating unit if it's the winter, uh, unplugging the refrigerator if you can, or anything like that, that you can hear a buzz or a hum or anything like that. And then another thing is to control reverb if that's something that you wanna do. You can use sound blankets just to help anything to kind of deaden that sound from bouncing off the walls and everything like that and then reaching your microphone. So with that said, that's gonna kind of wrap up this video on audio. I hope you found that helpful or useful. Hopefully something in here was helpful. If it was, consider subscribing to the channel so you can find more helpful tutorials on filmmaking and all that kind of good stuff. Well, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Peace.